Matthew Phelps behind bars for murdering his wife, Lauren Phelps, after claiming cough and cold medicine left him in a haze. Matthew Phelps is behind bars for the murder of his wife, Lauren Phelps, whose body was found at their home in Raleigh, North Carolina, at around 1.10 a.m. on September 1, 2017. Officers with the Wake County Sheriff's Office were dispatched to a home on Patuxent Drive after receiving a 911 call from Matthew. The then 27-year-old told dispatch that he fell asleep after taking a large dose of corsidin, a cough and cold medicine. When he awoke, he found Lauren, 27, dead on their bedroom floor, laying in a fetal position. Oh my God, she didn't deserve this. I can't believe this. I can't believe this. I'm so scared, Matthew told dispatch, according to People. Matthew claimed that the cough and cold medicine had left him in a haze, but since he was covered in blood and a bloody knife was on the bed, he said he believes he was the one who killed her. Responding officers arrested Matthew at his residence. He was booked into the Wake County Jail, where he was held without bond on a second-degree murder charge. Paramedics transported Lauren, who worked as a Sunday school teacher and an auditor to Wakement Health and Hospitals in Raleigh, where she was pronounced dead. An autopsy showed that Lauren sustained 123 cuts and stab wounds to her face, neck, throat, torso, and arms. ABC 11 reported that Lauren and Matthew began having marital problems after Matthew, who was studying to be a pastor, started spending more money and they were making on video games. His spending habits purportedly led Lauren to contemplate divorce. Lauren's sister told the program that she thinks Matthew made a decision that day that Lauren was not going to leave him, even if that meant he had to kill her. The police learned through an investigation that Matthew had a fascination with serial killers on his social media accounts. He would often post pictures of himself dressed as the main character in American Psycho, Patrick Bateman, who was a Wall Street investment banker by day and a serial killer by night. One of Matthew's friends told law enforcement officers that he told him that he wondered what it would be like to kill someone. Matthew initially stated that he couldn't remember killing his wife because he had taken cold and cough medicine before falling asleep. During his October 2018 court hearing, he admitted to Judge Paul Ridgway that he slashed and stabbed Lauren to death. In what appeared to be an attack, he apologized to the victim's family. He said, this was a senseless, mindless act and I regret every step that led me in that direction. I feel like a monster, one of the wretched, a part of the darkness we don't speak of. That darkness consumed me until I was blind to the path I had taken, and deaf to my own cries for help. When Lauren's father was asked if he forgave Matthew for killing his daughter, he said, no, never, I mean, I'll take him to my grave, and I'll still hate him. He, Matthew, planned the whole thing from the get-go, in my opinion. Right from day one to the end, he told ABC News, the last time I saw my daughter, she came over looking for a three-ring binder. She was nervous and a little edgy, and it didn't look like Lauren at all. She looked a mess. I regret it now that I didn't ask questions about what was going on. After Matthew pleaded guilty to first-degree murder, 
he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Patricia Ann Moore, murder of 10-year-old girl, found in wooded area over five decades ago remains unsolved. Patricia Ann Moore, who is known to relatives as Patty, was 10 years old when she was murdered. Her body was found in a wooded area in Clifton, Virginia, more than 50 years ago and the person responsible for her death has yet to be brought to justice. On July 5, 1970, Patricia left her home on 7359 Clifton Road, wearing an orange and white striped blouse with orange shorts and green shoes. She went walking to a friend's house at 7408 Maple Branch Road, but she never arrived, according to the Prince William County Police Department, just 17 days after Patricia went missing. On July 22, 1970, FBI agents arrested an 18-year-old male at the home he shared with his parents in Hillside, Maryland. He was a former student at Prince George's Community College who contacted Patricia's parents and asked for $20,000 for her safe return. Police learned through an investigation that he had no connection with Patricia's disappearance. He was booked into the county jail on a $10,000 bond. He was charged with violating the federal extortion statute. Three months later, on October 10, 1970, Patricia was found dead in Prince William County. Her skeletal remains, a skull and a jawbone, were discovered by two hunters. The remains were located in a wooded area at Ribbon Lodge Estate, off of Old Colchester Road near Cow Branch Bridge in Woodbridge. More bones were found three miles. From the fairfax Brents william border, the bee reported, investigators believe that the may have been scattered around by animals. Investigators have worked diligently throughout the years to find Patricia's killer, but ultimately no rests have been made, and her case remains unsolved. Anyone with information regarding the unsolved murder of Patricia and Moore, is encouraged to contact the cold case unit at 703-79-7000 or send an email to police dept pwcgov.org. Hello everyone. I want to start by expressing my deepest gratitude to each and every one of you for taking the time to watch my videos. Your support means the world to me, and it's what keeps this channel going. I've noticed that 77% of you who watch my videos are not yet subscribed to the channel. I understand that there might be various reasons for this, but I want to take a moment to emphasize how important your support is for the growth and sustainability of this channel. Your likes, comments, and shares not only help to boost the visibility of the videos, but they also provide me with valuable feedback that I use to improve the content. So, if you have any criticisms, likes, comments, or feelings about the videos, please don't hesitate to express them openly. Your voice matters to me and to this community. We're building together. If you find value in the content I create and want to be part of our growing family, please consider subscribing to the channel. It's a small action on your part, but it makes a huge difference for the channel. Lastly, I want to make myself available to you. 
If you have any questions, suggestions, or just want to chat, feel free to email me at serdar, E-R-G-E-N-C at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you once again for your support and for being a part of this journey with me. Let's continue to grow and learn together. Take care and see you in the next video.